Commissioner of Foreign Work, Marco Polo travels with the visitors from North Milan to Potsdam to estimate past implications, and 3D maps. The people behind this work are Andreas Nickler, Magdalena Wolfgang, Marvin Thiel, Matti Wiesmann, Benno Stein, and Manuel Burkhardt. The presentation is structured in three parts. First, we will give a short introduction. We will give the Marco Polo's travels were visited from motion event detection to optimal path computation in 3D maps. The people behind this work are Andreas Nickler, Magdalena Wolska, Marvin Thiel, Matti Wiegmann, Benno Stein, and Manuel Burkhardt. The presentation is structured in three parts. First, we will give a short introduction to travel literature and Marco Polo in general. After this part, we explain the natural language processing methods in this paper. After this, we explain how the spatial analysis and visualization was done and give you a short conclusion of our work. Travel is a major motive in many literary works. People's fascination with unknown regions and their exploration continues unabated and travel is a regular part of many people's lives. Travel literature appears in many forms, such as outdoor literature, guidebooks, nature writing, and travel memoirs. Examples of well-known travel literature are Che Guevara's The Motorcycle Diaries, The Travels of Marco Polo, or Peter Miles' A Year in the Provence. One of the earliest accounts of foreign travel and one of the most popular works from the genre of travel literature is certainly The Travels of Marco Polo, a medieval manuscript based on Marco Polo's stories. During Marco Polo's lifetime, the book was translated into many European languages. However, even then it was questioned whether Polo had really been to China or whether he had just reproduced stories that he had picked up from other travelers. As Klaassen states, countless authors of travelogues such as Marco Polo presented often rather astonishing accounts seemingly unbelievable in their content for their audiences back home. Readers who receive Marco Polo, for example, create a mental journey while reading, which may be traced in atlases or otherwise translated into ideas of the real journey. On an objective basis, one could also extract all concretely available description piece by piece and objectively transfer them to a map to create a systematic approach. Based on such a paradigm, Polo's presumed travel route can be reconstructed and geographically traced. In this work, we present a workflow for semi-automatic extraction of georeferences and motion events related to Marco Polo's travel from an English translation of the book. These are then used to create 3D renderings of the space and movement that will allow readers to visually trace Marco Polo's route themselves. Our main questions in this experimental work are, can we reconstruct the route of Marco Polo by analyzing the text contents semi-automatically? Is it possible to georeference location entities from the book? And which data formats are used in such a pro process? Can we use the information gained to create immersive visualizations to augment the reading experience? And can visualizations be used to align the reader's experience and the reality? Our proposal for a systematic workflow includes the following steps. First, we use natural language processing methods to reconstruct Marco Polo's route from the actual written text. We identify place names with the help of a gazetteer and machine learning. Movement between locations can then be detected with an information extraction process in a second step. In the third step, we identify the geo coordinates of the place names that are annotated in the text. With data based on the digital elevation model Copernicus Global DEM, combined with satellite photos, we are able to create representations of the landscape described in the book. We create the rendering, use Blender and Ray Shader, a package to render 3D data to a ray-traced representation in R. Finally, this landscape is used to calculate optimal paths depending on the landscape shapes, which enables more analysis possibilities regarding the interaction of the travelers regarding the landscape. The result of this workflow 
is the representation of a possible route embedded in a landscape that allows for an immersive experience and a more intense experience for users. This allows for more information and context to be added to the journeys, unlike 2D maps. We work with Henry Ewell's English translation, a Scottish orientalist and geographer of Marco Polo's travel travelogues obtained from Project Gutenberg. The translation was written in 1871 and Ewell received the Founders Medal of the Royal Geographical Society the following year. It is a downloadable text file in two volumes which we preprocess to sentences segments initially. The first step to an annotated resource is to identify the named places and the place references in the text source. For this we use a total of three different approaches. First of all, the manual annotation serves as a gold standard and a training dataset. This annotation was created as part of several student works. The gazetteer was created semi-automatically from the index of Henry Ewell's and Hugh Murray's translation of the books. We found that the gazetteer initially works with a higher recall since the place name register contains relevant places. Here various GIS were used to translate historical place names into modern place names and to resolve ambiguities. Furthermore, the gazetteer can also be used to reference entities and link directly to an entity in the gazetteer. Third, Flair NLP provides a high precision, but the recall is not optimal since many entities of interest are not uh, identified. The main reason here is that the models are not able to catch all the variants of place descriptions or some historical names. We explored how well the state-of-the-art computational methods work here, and we find that gazetteers work very well if they are carefully crafted. This is a lot of work and must probably be done for each historical travelogue. We tested Flair, which did not work very well, particularly with respect to recall, and this is likely due to historical names which are unknown to the model, but also the historical language used, which is uncommon in most training datasets for this AI-based model. The movement events are identified by so-called motion verbs. For this purpose, we use lexical resources to set up a dictionary of possible motion verbs. To create such a dictionary, we rely on resources like Verbnet, which categorizes verbs based on their meanings, such as verbs of motion, which includes verbs like run, for example, and Framenet, which captures the argument structures of verbs. Verbnet is the largest English verb lexicon, which includes a verb's predicate argument structures. Additionally, Framenet annotates examples of words' meaning and usage in real texts. Also, WordNet is used to collect synonyms for the dictionary-based identification process. The parser's output is then utilized to determine if Marco Polo is the subject of the motion verb disregarding other characters in the book. Moreover, it helps to classify the location argument of the motion verb. Moreover, it helps classify if the location argument of the motion verb falls within Marco Polo's route by identifying the subject of the motion verb. For the optimal extraction of a route segment, a clearly defined origin and destination is an ideal situation. Here, we assume that the order of motion events in the text equals the true order of the route. Since this is not always the case in reality, we smooth the route in the visualization map. In WerbNet, the verb classes under a top-level number share a similar me semantic meaning. For example, class number 51 represents verbs of motion. By checking the semantics of the verb classes, also by using FrameNet arguments, we chose reach, travel, leave, meander, arrive, roll, run, non-vehicle as subclasses. The gold standard contains 398 short sentences which express motion of Marco Polo and contain relative exact sources, destinations or locations. Geocoordinates were finally generated by resolving historical place names with historical geographic information systems and then acquiring the coordinates 
from the GIS is geonames.org, a geographical database which covers all countries. In particular, we used the China Historical Geographic Information System, the Silk Road Historical GIS and the Silk Road GIS. We can put the resulting 133 locations on the map and link them with possible chronological order. The result is saved as a KML file for further processing. KML, the keyhole markup language, as used in Google Earth. If we compare this result with the map version provided by Britannica, the sequence of the route from our gold standard seems very plausible. A route derived from a literary source enables readers to have a closer look at the traveled places, since there is more to travel experiences than just places visited alone. Vegetation, climate, certain obstacles, beautiful vistas are examples for information that can be stored in a map. This context makes it easier to understand why a person liked or disliked the part of a route. Knowing whether a traveled route is monotonous, the vegetation around it is dry, or temperatures in the area generally are very high can help to understand the decisions made by travelers. If this information is not explicitly mentioned in a travel report, it can be reconstructed using maps. Details about landscape and the traveled roads are most often sparsely described and days worth of travel are described using just a few sentences. However, when analyzing travel writing, Regular point-based maps do not normally allow for analyzing aspects of a more qualitative na nature, like the experiences that were made while traveling. Harris therefore described an alternative environment with the purpose to create immersive geographies that link the experiential, the emotional and the symbolic elements of literary works to the nuanced dimensional richness of places as inspired by authors and their works. In our work we contribute such an environment by providing a 3D map representation of the landscape elevation for different parts of the route. With data based on the digital elevation model Copernicus Global DEM, combined with satellite photos provided by Mapbox, we are not just showing points on a map but render 3D representations of the landscape. This integrates terrain, surface and travel routes equally which makes the travel experience tangible. We create the rendering using Blender and Ray Shader, a package to render 3D data to a ray traced representation in R. The intermediate result is a 3D rendered object of the travel section and the corresponding terrain. As suggested by Murrieta Flores, Coast surface analysis and least cost path analysis can be used to facilitate more nuanced interpretations of historical works of travel writing and topographical literature. To back the reader's intuition, the map can also be enhanced by highlighting the areas that are most easy to travel through. Therefore, we also integrated an LSP and CSA to our visualization that includes a corridor of optimal movement between two points on the map. First, we select the origin of the route section and the destination within the digital elevation model data. Mountains and valleys on the map can already be used as guides to guess a possible route that is easy to travel, travel along. In order to back the reader's intuition, the map can still be enhanced by highlighting the areas that are most easy to travel through. This example shows the connection between two points in the elevation model and the calculated optimal paths. It can be observed that the terrain only allows for a corridor displayed in red of optimal movement and the optimal connection can be overlaid as a path. When we visualize the place names, the cost corridor, the optimal path and the terrain together, the result is an augmented experience of the route in the context of the text passage in question, allowing for a deeper analysis and understanding of the text. The direct comparison with a two-dimensional map nicely shows that more aspects of the itinerary and a more concrete idea of the journey are possible.
with the demonstration of this prototypical workflow for the visualization of routes described in Marco Polo's travels, many potentials but also challenges become apparent. The NLP methods we presented are not optimal and not applicable to other works of travel literature. Therefore, we would like to invite you to use the offered gold standard in the future to participate in suitable NLP methods for this workflow. While Google Maps provides a good overview of the route to the terrain's topo uh, topography, the renderings provide a more photorealistic and immersive presentation of the route. The approach has a lot of potential. For example, fact-checking using coast corridors can help to understand if the described travels and times are realistic and plausible. We can likewise experiment to see whether readers' route imaginary while reading is in line with the actual situation in the field. Ultimately, we can study if such maps help to mentally take the entirety of the journey and thus generate a completely new experience. Thank you very much for your interest in our work.